Hi there, today I want to talk to you very briefly about camera lenses. I want to thank a few people first. First I want to thank Derek Roth. Derek donated to me this camera uh, last summer and it has been super helpful because it allows me to record lectures and concerts and what have you at Esperanto gatherings and it has a unique feature that even this not much newer and nicer camera that I'm using right now doesn't have. It can record for more than 30 minutes at a time. Be aware if you're buying a nice new camera and you want to take nice pictures of your kids and then you want to record the kids school play, well it's going to only record the first 30 minutes of that play and then just stop arbitrarily because of some random like European tax code saying that photo cameras can, you know, be taxed at this rate, but video cameras are going to be done, done this way. So it had to choose, well, is, are you selling a photo or a video camera? Well, I'm selling a photo camera that can do video. Well, it can't do video for more than 30 minutes then, or otherwise we'll have to call it both and you have to pay twice as much or something. So these cameras uh, have an arbitrary limit on them of 30 minutes. So this is super helpful to have. Derek, thank you for donating this to me. Uh, getting a lot of use out of that. This year because I'm going to several more Esperanto events than I have in the past. Now I also want to thank uh, Chuck Mays who single-handedly donated the money for this lens. This is a Yongnuo, Yongnuo, however you say it, uh, 50mm f1.8 prime lens. It's great for taking headshots. I use it today for taking some headshot pictures uh, and this is also great for nice cinematic tight shots on an actor or an actress, you know, when you really want to get that cool shot of them and it's all blurry behind them, but they're heroically there, this is the lens you want to use. You don't want to rely on a, on a lens that's getting a wide view of the whole room for that. So thank you uh, for sending me the money for this, Chuck Mace, and also uh, Deborah Wolf Kimbrough and Joshua Andrews. Collectively, your donation allowed me to buy this adapter, which lets me use this lens on my Canon M50 mirrorless camera. And it got me thinking when these arrived in the mail, you know, a lot of people don't even know the terminology for camera lenses in Esperanto, so I might as well make a video first thanking these fine folks, and thank you to everyone else who's chipped in as well. I just wanted to highlight those people, particularly who also left ni nice notes to me uh, when sending in money and PayPal and uh, Venmo and all that. Thank you guys. You're very kind and encouraging. And... Uh, Money is, is very nice, but also, you know, the people who comment and like and, and all that is, morale is an important ingredient in things too. So, uh, thank you guys for, for showing some love and support uh, here for what we're doing. I think it is very important what we're doing and we're making good looking content for people to get excited about in, in Esperanto. So, let's talk real quick about lenses because I want you to be able to discuss this. If this is a hobby or a passion of yours, camera stuff, if you're a pixel peeper, a, you know, a photo bug, then I want you to be able to discuss it without having to, uh, at an Esperanto convention or gathering, like cheat and start using English words because I don't even know the English word or the Esperanto word for this. So let me tell you about this new, uh, you know, telephoto lens I got. No, no, no. Let's, uh, let's help you out here so you don't have to do that there. Here's some words for lenses. So common misconception would be like in a dictionary, you might see a lens, lenso. Cool. I know the word for lens. I'm good. Well, no, you're not. Lenso is the word for a lens element is how we would say it in English. It is the single piece of light bending material, glass or what have you. So a contact lens, that's a lenso. But a lens like this device, this object that has plastic and metal and a focusing ring and metal contacts and screws, this overall device, this isn't a lenso. This is an objectivo. Note, objectivo is a complete lens apparatus. Okay, the O is like a big circle there, just like most lenses are shaped with an O. Uh, and then also think about the sense of, oh, you're looking at this very objectively. You're looking at it through objective lenses, through objective glass here. That's the situation here. Um, we are being objective about it because a, a camera doesn't lie. It just shows you what it saw, whatever light got into it. That's what it puts out in the picture. So it's very objective. It's not biased or anything like that. So objectivo is the word for a lens device. And this sample sentence helps you see the difference. Mi gratis la lenson de la objectivo. So, let's say I'm not being careful and, uh, you know, I nick and scratch and dent this, get some wear and tear on it. It's one thing to scratch the side and, oh, it's got some marks on it, but you don't want to scratch the lenson de la objectivo. Okay, the, the lens element itself, the glass piece there, you, that's very delicate, so don't do that. All right? 
So objectivo, that is the root word we want to think about when it comes to lenses. But you can put some little prefixes under that to specify what kind of lens do you want me to hand you if you need help setting up a shot. Well, maybe I want a zoom objectivo, that is a lens that zooms. A teleobjectivo, that's a lens that gives you really far distance, you know, like 200, 300 millimeter lens. Whoa, that'll really, that'll show me the bird across the street on that tree up close, even though uh, I'm really far away from it. Or macro objectivo. That is the kind of lens where it doesn't have to do with the distance, it, it deals with the focusing ability. Most lenses, you need a little bit of a distance away from the camera before it can be in focus. But a macro lens, for example, this 24 millimeter uh, uh, EFS prime uh, pancake lens, this one is macro, 0.52 feet away it can focus. Whereas this lens, you have to be a foot and a half away. So this one can be right here and make a bumblebee or a flower petal look really big and cool and get the fine details, whereas others you have to be so far back you don't see those details. So that's a difference of a macro objectivo. I want to note something for you though. Zomi means to zoom. Zoomi means to hum or buzz. A way to remember that, look at how this, the O in Zomi has a, I built a camera around it. So think of that circular lens being an O. Zomi is to zoom. So you want your camera to Zomi, you don't want it to Zoomi. Zoomi is hum, buzz, you know, blah, 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 whatever. It's something your mouth can do. So I think of the U as being like an open mouth in profile. Uh, that's a mouth making noises like humming and buzzing. And also the U and hum, the U and buzz, and the U and zoom. Hopefully all this helps you distinguish that even though in English we say zoom, in Esperanto we must say zoom. Zoom objectivo. Uh, so those I've seen in print in different places in the literature of someone mentioning a zoom objectivo. You could also describe uh, an objectivo as a portreta objectivo, a fichocula, or a large angula objectivo. Portreta uh, objectivo, that would be like this 50 millimeter. This acts like an 80 millimeter on a small sensor camera like the one I'm using right now. So this is great for taking nice headshots. It's, it's, I, let's not get into the math for it, but this is what will be very flattering and it won't warp or bend the face at all. It gives you a nice look of what the face should look like. Um, whereas other lenses, l wide angle lenses, or especially ultra wide, like fish eye lenses, fish okula lenses, those will show you the whole room, but the only way to do that is to really warp the light so the outsides, the outskirts of it look really kind of funky here, okay? A lot of uh, the videos on the Esperanto Variety Show, uh, those use an ultra wide, even borderline fisheye lens to see the whole room and you can see uh, the edge, you know, it's kind of warped on the side there. Nothing wrong with that, it's, just, it's our interesting choice there, but uh, for a nice flattering image up close on like an actor and like these short films that I'm making, I want it to be cool looking, uh, so let's have it be with the 50 that we're getting. So now I have this 50 millimeter for one M50, and then the other M50 that I have will be shooting simultaneously on a matching 50 millimeter. So I'll be able to get awesome looking shots at the same time, which means less time they have to use the actors. They don't have to get it right so many times. They can just get it and then, good, we got it right once. I will use that take in the editing process. So having these two matching lenses is super helpful for that. So Portretta is, you know, 50 to 80 millimeter, something like that is great for that. Fichocula is really small, like, you know, 8 millimeter lens. Large Angula, you know, like a 22 millimeter or 15 millimeter, that's large Angula. Jihavas fixan focusan longon de quindec millimetroi. It has a fixed focal length of 50 millimeters. That's describing the lens that I just got in the mail from Chuck. So how do we describe a prime lens compared to a zoom lens. That's just debatable and confusing in English. With Why is it a prime lens? Is that your main lens or is it prime because it's just not a zoom lens? So should we just call a lens like this that doesn't zoom just an objectivo? Should we call it a fix objectivo instead of a zoom objectivo? Like it has a, a steady constant uh, distance away. You can't crank it in and get tighter or farther away. Uh, what do we want to call it? I don't know. I say fix objectivo. I posit that that would be a good uh, word for that if I'm saying, you know, don't hand me the zoom lens. I'm not going to say the mall zoom, zoom uh, objectivo. I'm going to say fix objectivo. Um, but another word that I'm curious about is what's the best way to translate a pancake lens? A prime lens that's super tiny and flat like this. Uh, the one I'm using right now is a pancake uh, 22 millimeter. This is a pancake 24 millimeter. 
How do we say that? Do we actually use the word for a pancake in Esperanto? You tell me. But let the comments section of this video be the debating forum for keeping me up to date and keeping you all up to date on, all right, maybe I missed this lecture at some Esperanto convention, but yeah, what is the best terminology for some of these other specialty uh, lenses out there? But for now, this is just a basic overview. So yes, Portretta, Fischocula, Large Angula, and then circling back to just Objectivo in general, note that Objectivo means a lens, but Objectiva, Objective, uh, those can mean what they would in English, which is objectively, or, oh, he has an objective opinion. Line vidas la factoin Objective. He's not viewing the facts objectively. He's biased. He's, you know, not being fair. Donu vian objectivan opinion. Give your objective opinion. Totally fine. But what you would not say is, What's our mission objective? Are we going to free those hostages? No, we don't say objective as in the goal or the purpose like that. You would say, uh, for purpose, you'd say chialo, uh, the reason. But here you'd say celo, C-E-L-O. Uh, it's the aim. Chio es es la celo de nia grupo. What's, what's our goal here? What are we aiming for? So you don't want to say objectivo in the sense of what we're trying to accomplish. No, you only want to say objectivo in the sense of a lens apparatus. All right? Hopefully that's enough for one day and I don't overwhelm you with this much uh, vocab. So think about that. Discuss it below. Thank you for watching. Thank you all uh, who have donated to the channel and have a wonderful day.